Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Passing Money. Y'all know who we are. Uh, today, we're going to talk about, you know, our top five tips on managing money. That's These are things that we see people, I was going to say do, but they're not doing, and they're in bad financial straits. And we're just going to give you the ideas of what we do personally in our lives to manage our, our funds and our money to continue to grow our net worth. Uh, we're going to go back and forth. Alex, you're first up on the scene. We're going to do the top five. You give us number one. So what you got? Uh, the first one I got is controlling emotion. And I think this is necessary in every sense. You can go to the workplace or business. Uh, controlling emotion just simply is going to allow you to make logical and rational decisions where it needs to be. And as you mentioned before, money is an emotional object. People that are more emotional are more broke. And I think that speaks a lot of truth because money does just that. It just amplifies your situations. And if you can learn to control that emotion and control greed, happiness, anger, any kind of emotion, you're going to be, I think you will be successful in doing that. I mean, I've even seen middle class people that are not emotional and they know how to at least manage those situations, those financial situations. So I think that's a big one on the list. Yeah, you're right. And uh, and I, I always say to people, you show me the most emotional people in your family. And it's usually the most emotional people in your family are the ones that's always broke because it's always a family member. Somebody's always coming to them with a sob story or they have to do, you know, emotional shopping and, this and that to make it happen. Controlling emotions is, you know, essential as you, I mean, as you know, Alex, but the viewers might not know is the people that have the money are the logical thinkers, the people who think the most logically. And, you know, everybody pull your families and your friends, the ones that's emotional usually don't have money. And the ones that's logical thinkers and don't, you know, succumb to emotion as much, they are the usually the family members that have money. I'm not saying they're, you know, baller rich, but they have money, you know, when, you know, stuff arrives. It's usually the logical thinkers. Um, it's not necessarily the person who makes the most money in the family. That's the logical thinker. It's the people that controls their emotions and they put money to the side because they know bad times are going to come and not just hoping bad times never come. Uh, for me, the number two thing is just controlling your needs versus wants. Some people don't know what needs and wants are. Um Alex is the king of needs and wants. Everything he feels is a want. So he don't deal with none of it. He just probably, he just say he needs to breathe. That's it. But, but controlling the needs and the wants, that's, that's huge. It's, um, people think table is not a need. Uh, the, a new car is not a need. A car payment is not a need. Maybe now in this day and age, a car is a need, but a new car, car payment, that stuff is not a need. And people don't know how to delineate what's a need, what's a want, what's a need, what's a want. If people just drummed it down and then just had a piece of paper and just drew a line down on paper and wrote what's needs, what's want on each side of the paper in their life. And then they had a real assessment or sit down with somebody who uh, does not come to succumb to emotion and you just put your needs and your wants and then you just share that piece of paper if it's a significant other great if it's not you don't have a significant other uh you know look get a family member that you look up to and start taking all those wants you can take those out and then you focus just on the needs and you get the needs taken care of then you'll see if the, if you're only taking care of your needs you will have an exceptional amount more money exceptionally more money that's what i was trying to say to to do the things that you want to do later in life, you know, it'll give you the ability to stack money to have that emergency fund for rainy days and things like that. But without, without understanding your needs versus your want, if you got a lot of things as wants in your needs category and you just spend it, spend it, spend it, and then you don't have enough money at the end of your month and you're wondering what's going on it's because your priorities are screwed up. I like you got anything on that. No, I agree completely. And I mean, for my third one is uh, being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And really, the my biggest point that I'm trying to make on this is that there's going to be opportunities that arise that you need to just go for it, or at least try and 
see if it's a valid opportunity. But I would rather take the chance of gaining an opportunity or take the chance at an opportunity and it not turn out to be one than not having made any action and just not know. And Robert Kiyosaki talks about this, where his rich dad told him to go to like Peru to some gold mine or something. And there was no gold mine, but it's having, you know, that ambition to at least test and see, is it there? But I see this happen in other people's lives where there are opportunities that arise and people are too comfortable, like, oh no, I have to go here for a family birthday party. Can we reschedule it or something? Like that was one big thing I, you know, and I'm not to make this too long, but one big thing that I was adamant about doing with learning from you was like, hey, meet me here Saturday. We'll talk on this or let's do a class here or let's do a video here. Like everything else in my life got pushed aside. This was more important. I need to do this. I need to execute on this to learn more or achieve my goals. So you just have to decide and realize what is actually more important to your life. But what is your, or do you have something to say on that? Yeah, no, um, that let's take it a step further on being comfortable, being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Um, like, like the opportunities that arise, like house hacking. I mean, everybody got this grand plan of, oh, when I turn 18, when I turn 21, I'm moving out of my parents' house. I'm going to buy my own house and I'm going to make enough money <clears throat> to be able to afford all these things. And Alex, as you know, and for the people that don't know, the cost of everything is when higher. It's increasingly, increasingly harder for people to get a job, especially entry level, to get a house. The age of people buying houses are getting uh, bigger. You know, everybody want to say, oh, I'm leaving my parents' house. I'm getting away from my brothers and sisters. I want to have my own. But if you took that mindset, that mindset of being uncomfortable of, hey, why don't I get a place and then rent out the rooms because the cost of living is so high. I can rent out the rooms cheaper to people than them buying or renting their own individual place. That will cover the mortgage of your house and you can live for free, which will free up money. But yeah, you will be uncomfortable because you have other people in the house with you, but it's giving you an opportunity to be successful on a financial landscape. But you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. It can't just be everybody want to live in comfort, live in comfort, live in comfort, and think that everything is going to be all right. To live in comfort costs a lot of money. And it ain't a lot of money going around in these businesses that they pay employees to be comfortable. But you can change your situation around if you temporarily be in a, put yourself in uncomfortable situations to obtain more money to put yourself in a more comfortable situation later. But on that note, I'm going to go to step four because it's my last one. Uh, is stop spreading money thin. Stop spreading money thin. Now, this is for the investment people out there. Um, I see it all the time. Uh, I'm scrolling through Twitter, people talking about what stocks and what investments that they have in their portfolios and it's 20, 30, 40 stocks. So let's just use a round number. If they got $1,000 in this in 20 some stocks, how much money are they really putting? How much money is really invested in the top one or two stocks in that portfolio. The reason why people have these long lists of stocks is because they're too lazy or they don't know how to do due diligence. So they figure if I put a little money everywhere, then hopefully, you know, some of them will go up and then I'll make money. No, when they do go up, you got $50 in, in one stock. Let's say it goes up 500%. Let's say it goes up 1,000%. It's still not going to be enough money for you to say, oh, I'm good to go. But if you sit there and do your due diligence, do your due diligence, and then you focus on one, two, or maybe three stocks, and you sit there and understand that these are the best stocks to be invested in, and then you get all the money and all your capital and get as many shares as possible of that one to three stocks, then if it goes up 100, 200, 300%, then now you have a big nest egg to work off of. That's so stop spreading your money thin because when you spread it thin, it's just like gambling. It's it's admitting that you don't know what you're doing. Uh, Warren Buffett said it best. 
when people talk about diversification and they buying all these stocks, it's like being a C student. Yeah, you will pass the class. You will eventually graduate, but you will never see the full potential of your portfolio because you didn't do the work. You didn't do the actual work to select the best. You just was hoping that one of these could be the best. Alex, you got anything on that? No, I agree completely. Uh, you don't, you know, you don't want to, just to give a quick example, if you got, you know, $100 spread across 100 stocks, but then if you have $10,000 spread across three stocks, you know, you'll, you'll see a difference when one of them goes up 300%, like I said. But right. my last one on this is finding additional income. I think this is very important. And this is one that I actually, I would say I did without knowing, which was, you know, arbitrage from a younger age than I'm than I already am. And um with arbitrage, it actually gave me it, it gives you not just arbitrage, an additional income gives you more of a sense that you are more secure outside of your job and you don't have to fully rely on a job 100 percent You have extra income to do XYZ or whatever. You have additional income to be able to save, to be able to invest. And if you fully just rely on your job, depending on your living expenses, you could be confined to just that income. So finding additional income in anything is the, is a huge one on what is going to separate you from your job in the future or liberate you from your job. But and it doesn't have to be arbitrage. There's plenty of other ways, but arbitrage is a very cheap way to start. I mean, it's very not costly at all. To your point on additional income, I mean, additional income, I mean, arbitrage, I believe, is one of the paramount, easiest, and most bang for your buck ways to go out there. But no matter what, you can't. I mean, everybody that's sitting there complaining, oh, I don't make enough in my job. You should be spending the time you're not at your job finding ways to make more money. Low cost, effective ways to make more money. I don't care if it's, I mean, hopefully it's not a second job where you're working for somebody else. But if it has to be a second job, it's a second job. If it has to be uh, baking cakes and selling them, whatever you need to do to make additional income, you have to do it. The time to hang out with your friends, to party, all that other stuff will come later. But right now, you're in a money crunch. You need to find some ways to make more money. I mean, of course, cutting out needs and wants can only go so far. It only You only cut so much, but there's no limit to how much money you can make. So combine those two together, you cut your expenses, and then you raise your income, and then all that gap in between, that's where you have fun with it. But first, you have to do it to get that gap. If you don't do it to get the gap, then you're always going to be struggling, complaining about the system, which you're a part of. With all that being said, guys, I hope this information was good for you. And you could take a nugget for, you know, one of the five uh, topics that we or tips we put out there. Um, hopefully, hopefully it benefits you in your life. And if you have any questions, please hit the comment section below. But please like and subscribe and support the channel. And we'll see you next time. See you guys.